Yes, and Miles, man, on that same standpoint, us talking about ancient America and us being indigenous to this land, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Um, I saw this clip, man, recently um, on Bag Fuel, I think. It's a great podcast, but it's a guy, uh, Shampoo, he's an old head, but, man, he was on there saying how his family, they're from here. And then him and the co-host, they was, like, going at it, and he was like, so where's your family from? And he was like, I ain't going to lie. My grandma, she was Blackfoot. So it's like black people know these things, man, but we just got to tap into this history. And by you doing things like this, us having conversations such as these exposing all this great information, man, it's needed. Um, something else too, man, that I think is going to make a lot of people uncomfortable too is the Bat Creek Stone, man. I'm going to pull that up uh, in a few seconds, oh. but that's going to make people very uncomfortable because that uncovers yeah. so much that we've been taught when it comes to misinformation, because there's always been secrets about ancient Hebrew being found in America. Yeah. But man, when you send me that article, that's not Miles saying this. This isn't me saying this. This isn't even your friend, your homeboy up the street saying this. These are yeah. other European archaeologists who are finding this information and exposing this, man. And it was confirmed. So again, man, yeah, we, we've, we've heard theories about ancient Peru and Jerusalem, similar to Jerusalem. We've heard mm. theories about Again, ancient spirituality, but seeing this, man, about, hey, they were actually speaking Hebrew and they knew Hebrew and they were saying that they were of these people as well. That then proves that something was going on, Miles. Something was going yeah. on, bro. So how yeah. did they even have access to learn Hebrew and were, were our people connected with other people of the East as well when it came to old and ancient spiritual systems? OK, cool. So let's let's get this understood like right away yeah. because when when we think about them when we think about the mississippians learning hebrew or like coming across hebrew from some mm -hmm. traveler that came from mm -hmm. the east mm -hmm. this is what we got to understand that the hebrew that they found here is the oldest hebrew yeah i read that yeah it's paleo <laughs> hebrew yeah, it was paleo hebrew that's right which that's is crazy. which is really considered what they call it phoenician Yep, you know, exactly. Exactly. Paleo Hebrew is Phoenician or whatever. Yep. That's the so excellent point, the, Miles. You're right. You're right. The oldest Hebrew come right. from here, and You're then right. all, all these right. different versions of Hebrew come after that. You mm. feel me? So yeah, what's what's interesting about it is that like like I I hit on a little bit earlier. They say that the Mississippians left no written record. But that you right know, there that, is a written record right there that they had you, that they were talking you, about. Yeah, you're right. This is right. Crazy. It's a contradiction. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a contradiction yeah. because here we got various inscriptions, like various mm. stones that have he Hebrew on them, but like mm. Proto Hebrew, uh, mm. Paleo Hebrew, the oldest form. Mm. We got all these stones, and we got the Ten Commandments supposedly, <laughs> the New Work Holy Stones. Wow. You know what I mean? That have the Ten Commandments written on them, and then we got the 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 uh, Back Creek Stone has Judean written on them. Yeah, it does. You know, so it just seems like we may have other scripts that they mm -hmm. have in the basement somewhere. Wow. You know, because why yeah. would you have the ability to fashion all these different forms of jewelry? You're able to lay out city blueprints, like with mm -hmm. real bustling cities with like. 30,000 population. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You are aligning different buildings to astronomical events, to mm -hmm. the equinox sunset, to the winter sunset. Like mm -hmm. you're able to do all this different stuff, but you didn't leave wow. no written history nowhere. But wow. you see, you see writing in different places, but <laughs> we didn't leave no written history. <laughs> so apparently they don't want to show us that like a full script, but mm -hmm. I guess some made it through the cracks where, you know, dang, you know, I yeah. guess the person that found it, he didn't, he didn't have the, he didn't have a, he wasn't, he didn't have the message. Hey, like, yo, don't show this. You, know <laughs> you can't saying? put this out. Nah, yeah, facts. This out, bro. You know, facts. so I don't really know. I'm not a the theologian, so mm. I don't know the biblical work, like the biblical history. I, I'm, I'm very knowledgeable of it. But I'm not going to consider myself like a theologian or be able to tell you like the history of, and all these different like verses in the Bible or whatever. 
but I do know that Hebrew. Well, what I'm, what I'm gonna say is this: I don't. I know that we spoke and wrote Hebrew, so mm. there's documentation from various settlers and people that came here from Spain and and the Netherlands or whatever that stated yes. that these people were speaking Hebrew, like yes. saying holy words, you know, yeah. like hallelujah and stuff like yeah. that. And had had like Jewish practices, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so we know from firsthand accounts that people witness pe these people practicing Jewish customs. And then we have, you know, really old relics of Hebrew script written on stone. Yeah. But I don't know how the Jesus story can. I don't think the Jesus story connects. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, n none of the religious systems that we mm -hmm. know today, that doesn't connect to that. I feel mm -hmm. like in, in my own speculation, I feel like Hebrew was a language for us and a written script for us that mm -hmm. some for some reason that Eastern the Eastern religion of like Christianity and all of that wants that connection. They yeah. want the Hebrew connection with their um, like narrative, like religious mm -hmm. narrative. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it all connects. I don't know how Hebrew went over there, but I just know that we got the oldest mm -hmm. and that's kind of like really all I really need to know about that because I'm just trying to connect that Hebrew to the old religious spiritual system that i know existed here you know what i'm saying exactly. i don't think that that hebrew should be connected to like trying to figure out the christianity mm -hmm. yeah um narrative right no, or, sure. or the hebrew israelite narrative you know what i'm saying <laughs> no, I, I think that. that we get lost when we when we like play into like eastern hemisphere concepts yeah you know what i'm saying so but yeah no nah, man for sure because it's just like it's a whole nother thing because, man, seeing that, I'm like, that kind of exposes a lot. You feel what I'm saying? So right now we're actually right, on right. this article because that's so fascinating, man. So it was this one that you had sent. Tell me if you're able to see it. Are you able to see yeah, it right now? Yeah, definitely. Perfect, perfect, yeah. perfect. Definitely. So the Bad Creek Stone was professionally excavated in, in 1889, rather, from an undisturbed burial mound in eastern Tennessee. So eastern Tennessee. So I'm in Georgia, so that's just a state up. For me, yes, the director right of the project, away. Cyrus Thomas, initially declared that the curious inspection on the stone, beyond question letters of the Cherokee alphabet, so that's what they thought. Hmm. In the 1960s, Henry Mertz and Corey A.U. both noticed that the inscription, when inverted from Thomas's orientation to that of above paragraph, instead appeared to be ancient Semitic. Wow. Last Semitic languages scholar Cyrus Gordon confirmed that it is indeed Semitic and specifically, to your point, Paleo-Hebrew of approximately the first to second century AD. According to him, the first five letters of the comma shape word divider read from right to left or for Judea. So, wow. So we're talking yeah. about Eastern so Tennessee. So it could read Judea or Judean, you know? Yes. Yeah, Eastern wow. Tennessee. Wow. You yeah. know, and- for, for the Judeans, you're right, for the Judeans, wow. This is a trip because if you scroll up just a little bit- Yeah. Um, that comma right there. Yep, right here. No, go no over just oh, over by the L by the. It oh, here, like yes, an L right there. Yep. They I didn't see. know that that was anywhere else until they found wow. the Dead Sea Scrolls. Wow. So, you know, <laughs> it's just like we know it's not a fraud. This mm. is not. This is not nothing that was a hoax because. How would you know to for the comma is there? It can't be a hoax. You know what I'm saying? Like who how, what great information did the hoaxer have to know, like, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna put the comma in here. Nobody knows that the comma exists in this in it. the oldest form of it, you know? <laughs> wow. So yeah, it's just a trip, man. Um recently yeah, <clears throat> argue that the inspection. Yeah, so. Then you have other ones where it's saying holy to Yahweh, where again, to right. your point, we're speaking ancient Hebrew. We have all these things right, right here in the South, man. This is truly fascinating, y'all. Make sure to check this 
this out. I'll make sure to have this link displayed below so y'all can check out some of these sources for yourself and read this, man. And to your right. point about and stone the, building. Uh huh. The trip part about it is that I feel like the his the uh the Hebrew Israelites will look at this and say that this was from Israel or like it, you know what uh, I'm saying? I, see. I don't yeah, know, I see. like we have a hard time accepting the information because it really would help their argument, I yeah. think. Hey, Miles, that was the first thing, man. When I read you that, know? I was like, oh, this ties in perfectly with that. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. If you think that you if you think that Israel is over here, but right. if you think that Israel is over there, and it's like it don't make no sense like that. You know, so what I, mean? I think, man, according to Hebrew Israelites, man, is that I think uh the northern tribes, so it was 12 tribes, and that 10 of those tribes traveled to ancient America after the fall of Jerusalem, if I'm not mistaken, and that they moved over here and then carried on those same uh, religious practices and things like that. Right. But when you look at the when you look at the the timeline's groups. off though. Yeah. The timeline is off because yeah. when you look at the yeah. groups, they say one of the one of the tribes is like Puerto Ricans and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like yeah. a Puerto yeah. Rican and a, yeah. and a Dominican. Yeah. Nah, nah. <laughs> that listen, like came I came about in the fifteen yeah. or the fifteen hundreds, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So but yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to you bash on nobody. I'm just of hoping course. everybody just find this information of and course. really uh just open up to it, you know what I'm saying? Yes, bro. Because yes, it's man. super like it's super something that we have not been exposed to, you know, man, and it kind of answer you. a lot of questions. It does, bro, because it's like just from reading that, right, and seeing, oh, this is eastern Tennessee. It's like again, we have so many stories that's right below our feet that we have no idea about. And like what you said, when we have these people teaching us, they aren't going to tell us these things. We have these people doing excavations, all this stuff, like what you said, since the 1800s, and none of this information is being shared. You don't see these things at museums. You don't see any of these things, man. And I'm right. just truly, truly fascinated. So we got Paleo Hebrew, man. We talked about uh, the Bat Creek Stone. Um, again, man, Hopewell, that piece of information, I'm just amazed by it because it's like we've had people traveling. And in that same piece, they were talking about our people traveling on canoes up the entire Mississippi River like a highway. Yeah. What was going on on the ancient Mississippi River during those times of ancient America? Right. So the the river must have been just like a highway system, you know, because a lot of the mounds were situated around the river. And then the mounds had satellite communities like around them as well. So mm. the river just allowed for easy yep. navigation from one community to the next. You know, mm. we were able to carry all inventory of whatever we needed, you yes. know, taking things from the storehouse to different communities or traveling and, and taking different goods and different like uh, garbs and, and precious metals, you know, across the different communities. That particular river system was just vital for us. If we look at economics today, you know, if you look at just how trade is is operated now, if you look at the Red Sea, if you look at any yep. one of these particular um, waterways, yep. you know, countries still use waterways as a, like the blood, like the, the veins of economics. You know it's what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So that's exactly what was going on to my knowledge, yeah. um, with the Mississippians and the different um, nations that made up, you know, that collective group. Yes, sir. Ancient Mississippian spirituality is something that just keeps fascinating me, man, because it's like we've been taught about either Christianity or before that, that ancient Americans, ancient Mississippians had no spiritual systems. From us being able to have this conversation, read these articles, present all of this information, talk about the mounds, all of that. They were so spiritually advanced and it was one map. I had to find that map, but it had shown that in certain parts, certain people worship certain things more. So it was a part um, on the map mm -hmm. sent where yeah, it was Georgia. Yeah, I know what map you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, Georgia, it was like sun worship. Uh, Louisiana, it was like water worship, all of these things. Right. Now, if, if we were, I would probably say, let's say we were in Georgia, but ancient Mississippian times, who and what would we be praying to during that time? If you was in Georgia, okay, let me pull up that map right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. It see. was very interesting.
Let me see. Pull that up real quick. In one second. Uh huh. Okay, so in Georgia, it's looking like so it's it's safe for Georgia. I wish we could pull this up, but I'm gonna try to show. Um, I don't know. The What's camera the source? I can try to I, type that in online. Actually. Oh that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you the source right now. Okay. Uh, Let one second. Share screen real quick. Uh, give me one second, man. Oh, you good? Okay, here we go. Um, the Mound Builders, their works and relics. It's by Stephen Stephen D. Pete. Stephen D. Pete. So, yeah. And they will have, we could go straight to it, actually. It's going to be page 18 when um, when you're able to pull up the... Okay. Let's see. Try one. So the Mound Builders, their works and relics. Got you. Uh, P E E T. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, no. oh yeah. And then I'm gonna change the name. Okay. Yep. Cool. And then yeah, so this book right here, if you just go straight to that, uh, I think they'll have it on a preview version over here to your right, where it say full oh, book I available. Yep, let me go. Yeah, back. go to page eighteen. Try to go to eighteen. See if they okay. So we're on sixteen. Yep, that's eighteen. Let me go back. Oh, is that eighteen right oh, there? Yep. Yep. It went too fast. That's my bad. Yep. Man, let me see. This is a uh... wait. Hold on. We may have to go to the because it's a different image that they pulling up. They actually. It should be. Oh, go to the. Um, you see where you have page eighteen, and you have the plus or minus, and then you have next to that you have the uh, single, double, yeah. and then go to the far right. Yeah. Here. Oh no. Um. Yeah. Right there. There you go. Oh no. The uh. It's all the uh, right there. There you go. Yep. Thumbnail view. Yeah. My bad. There we go. Okay. No, so good. they should have. If you scroll down a little bit, that mm -hmm. map should be in here. So keep scrolling, keep scrolling. So scroll. Uh, Is it this one right scroll. here? No, nah, it's not that one. It's coming up right there. So if you look... Uh, here. Yeah, uh, to your left. Oh, no, actually, right it's that there. one. Yep, I remember it. Yep. Yeah. There so we, we just pull this up right here. Oh, this is from <laughs> Stephen D. This one from Stephen D. Pete, um, 1831. Um, no, publication date is actually 1892. So this is the publisher is Chicago Office of American Antiquity. Um, and we just look at what's going on across the landscape of Mississippi, what we should call Mississippi. Yep. You know what I mean? So if we just look at Georgia, where Georgia would be, you know, we would look down and see that that's agriculturalists, yep. sun and idol worship, pyramids, yep. idols, portraits, pipes. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, it's a connective thing that we all have specialized, like, like uh, signature things that we do, that we partake in. Yes. And then we go and pay homage you know, and, and visit another high king that's in another realm uh, or a region where they do something else that's spectacular. You know what I mean? Beehive tombs, stone graves. Yeah. You got the swamp dwellers, the water, water coat, large circles. Yes. You know what I mean? 
man, it's just it's magnificent. And this is all. And if we can we pull up that timeline? No, for that, sure. Uh, so that timeline is important because when we think about all this stuff that's going on, we are made aware of it through Saturniona, right? Which is 1562 Common Era. And then Saturniona is connected to this super ancient history that track all the way back 10,000, you know, BC. You know what I mean? Wow. It's just, it's, 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 and then you have like these stone maces like this right here. Yep. that look kind of similar to onks and, and yeah. I've seen a yeah, lot of them look when, like onks. Yeah, exactly. I was going to bring that up too. I got to find that eventually. But yes, man, seeing that, like it's a lot of similarities, man. It's yeah, a lot and of these are the books that we want to, as a community, dive into. So anything that's being um, uh, brought to us by, let me see, I'm going to pull out one right now. Like this right here, I'm going to show you. Oh, sheesh. <clears throat> this right here, I'm going to pull, pull it out. Right Anything, so this is like, then let me take this. Uh, let me take this uh, blur off, maybe. Okay, let me see. One second. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when we just look go. at anything that's kind of made by the Smithsonian Institution, Bureau of, of American Ethnology, we need to be looking into that because mm. they really are putting all of the ex excavation data into these books. They're not wow. putting them into like these feel good books that <laughs> the, the uh, scholars are, are making yep. for us. You know what I mean? Yep. We got to be looking here like mm. this is the Indians of the southeastern United States. OK, 77th Congress, 77th Congress up here is a very old book. It was. Uh, let's, see. let's see. So this is 1946 right here. Wow. You know, what I mean, an old copy. And if you look in the index. They're gonna be talking about Saturiona in here. They like they got wow. Saturiona in the index. <laughs> so Smithsonian Institution, you know what I mean? Super, like really old, you know. Um, like we were just looking at Cyrus Thomas, uh, Cyrus Thomas, who was making a connection with the Cherokee um, mm -hmm. language and Hebrew. You know, he has mm -hmm. a book that's called uh, Cherokee or Hebrew. You know, wow. like that's the title of the book. You know, and he's one of the actual people that are out there doing the field studies. You know, this is another one. The the problem of the Ohio Mounds, Cyrus Thomas, 1889. You know, this is where they putting all that information. And and the thing about it is you can actually um buy old copies of these books. So the information is available for us to get. 